So let's continue further. What are the capabilities of business intelligence and analytics? The first one is basically production reports. Production reports are predefined reports on a particular industry specific requirements. For instance, if you're going to look at sales, production report for sales can be sales forecasts. For marketing, it can be the marketing campaign effectiveness. For supply chain, it could be fulfillment statuses. It, for finance, it could be uh, accounts receivable, so on and so forth. Parametrized reports uses parameters, certain key parameters, so that you can filter the data and isolate the impact of certain parameters. So if you want to enter a region and a time of day to understand how sales of a product vary by region and time, then you should be able to use that. For instance, if you want to look at how a virus spread in a particular city at what date, then you should be able to get a report on that. Okay. Dashboards and scorecards are visual tools. A dashboard basically can be a tool that a manager can see what is happening in his or her department. Suppose I'm a manufacturing manager. I get up in the morning, I go to my office, I open my computer. The first thing that I see is a dashboard which tells me how many, what is the inventory? How many widgets have been made? What is my raw materials inventory? Where, what my, uh, how many employees are working today? So on and so forth. Ad hoc query usually uses your own inputs. If these are not canned reports, these, I mean, in the sense that these are not reports that are created for everyone, but if you specifically needs a particular report or for partic using particular data, that is ad hoc query. Drill down basically is the ability to move from a summary to a more detailed view. Then you have forecasts, you have scenarios, you have models. Usually um, there are nonlinear and linear forecasting methods. There are various techniques for forecasting. And if you if you study operations management, you have different types of forecasting that you, you will be taught. In scenarios, the main scenario is what if scenario analysis. So if you change a parameter, what happens? So for instance, if you change uh, from one particular re you know, one particular region, there are some sales. And if you think that you if you can get uh, 200 more customers, what will happen to the sales? If that model can predict it, then you can, that is the word of scenarios. Then you have the regular data analysis that you can pretty much use. Examples of predefined business reports as we talked about can be sales forecasts, um, can be churn rates, can be basket analysis for marketing, can be supplier performance, fulfillment status, uh, accounts receivable and uh, and also retention in in a company or sports or a school or university or what is a compensation so on and so forth predictive analysis uses statistical analysis it also uses data mining it uses historical data but it the main thing is the assumption so there is always a problem with the assumption if there is a problem with the assumption then the whole model is wrong so it, everything depends on the assumptions. And also everything depends on the assumptions of future conditions. And assuming future conditions is always tough, as we all know. And that's why many of these predictive anal uh, analytic packages come with various techniques and you can use multiple techniques to see where you are and predict maybe a range. Predictive analytics also extracts information from data. 
in order to predict future trends and behavior patterns. So for instance, if you, you, if you are having a small stores and you are looking at so many customers came and bought so many things, using that data, you can predict, maybe this is how much I need of this product next month. That is a simple way of predictive analy analytics. The accuracies can be different, it varies. It can be anything from, the book says 65 to 90, but it can even go from 25 to 90%. Big data analytics uses predictive analytics. And the idea is to use big data. And you know what is big data because we have talked about it before. Data that can be pulled from various directions, including from, the, from your website, from government agencies, from social media marketing, and so on and so forth. And also from the regular uh, performance data or operational data that you get from your company. All these are pulled into one big forum of data, and that is the big data. <clears throat> and you can combine that big data with your own data, and then use various analytical models to predict. And this is pretty much used nowadays for utility management, for operation and transportation, delivery of healthcare, and public safety, and so on and so forth. The operational intel intelligence and analytics consists of day-to-day -day monitoring of business decisions and activities. These are real-time monitoring. For instance, Schneider, the, the the trucker, Schneider, you have seen trucks called Schneiders. So Schneider has a log is a logistics service provider and um, they have developed data from sensors and trucks, trains and industrial systems, as well as they have their own data. And then they pretty much pull everything together to do their logistics services. The Internet of Things provides huge streams of data from various connected sensors and devices as such. Business intelligence users are, 20% of them are employees, IT developers, super users, business analysts, analytical modelers. They are the ones who use business intelligence. So there are power users, and I said 20% of the employees are power users, and you have casual users, about 80% of the employees. So the power users are usually the IT developers and so on and so forth that we talked about, whereas the casual users are senior managers, uh, business analysts, and so on and so forth. They use production reports, they use parametrized reports, they use da dashboards, they use scorecards, they use ad hoc queries, they use the OLAP, they use the forecast, they use board of analysis, as well as uh, statistical models. Decision support systems basically includes what if analysis, it uses, it, it includes sensitivity analysis, it, in, it includes simple pivot tables in Excel. These are very powerful spreadsheet functions for multidimensional analysis using Excel. And also they have uh, intensive modeling techniques. Then there are group decision support systems. They facilitate solving unstructured problems by various decision makers. The idea is to collect various data, you rank them, you store them, as well as you can make decisions out of them. Group decision support systems pretty much use um, meetings so that you form a team and then you come go through the decisions. It can be done in conference rooms, it can be done virtually, and, and you can have increased productivity with the right set of teams. Then we come to artificial intelligence techniques. Artificial intelligence basically is Intelligence that you use in computers to mimic humans so that the computers can make decisions just like humans. It's a tall order 
because humans are capable of making decisions from various sensory inputs and um, pulling all those sensory inputs together, putting data together in their, on their minds and coming out with decisions. Intelligent techniques usually are to capture knowledge from various experts from various experts you discover patterns and behaviors in large amounts of data you perform some human like actions you generate solutions to problems that only humans can solve and it is pretty much used in decision making and managing the knowledge and these are the artificial intelligence techniques and we are going to go through various artificial techniques in from uh, from my next um, video